Hello friends, this is how to create perfect copies of your physical CD collection using X Lossless Decoder, or XLD for short. For those familiar with EAC, this is the Mac OS counterpart. I am doing this on a virtual machine, so please bear with my tiny screen resolution. I don't have a Mac of my own to film this video with. To save you the trouble of watching some long intro and finding out afterwards that you can't actually use the program, we're going to go into our About This Mac, and then we're going to look at our version number. If your version is below 10.13 or macOS High Sierra, you cannot use XLD. For those of you who have a higher version than 10.13 or are on 10.13, you will also need a CD drive and a fairly popular CD to rip. So just to show you guys what the output will look like after you finish a rip, we're going to take a look in my downloads folder. Here we can see a folder tagged with the artist name and release title. Within it, we can see all the tracks are ripped in FLAC format. They're tagged with track numbers and track titles. There's a cover art, a cue sheet, and a log file. This log file will also score 100% for those that care. If you already have XLD installed, make sure the version that you're on is over October 1st, 2018, as the plugins we're going to be using will not work with it otherwise. For those of us who do not have XLD installed, we're going to head to SourceForge to download XLD. The specific website I'm visiting will be in the description, so go ahead and click that now, or you can try your luck reading the tiny text on my tiny screen. Once you're here, you'll be met with a big green download latest version button. At the time of making this video, that version is 2023.04.16, however if you're watching this in the far future, a new version may appear here instead. Go ahead and download it now. By the way, if this video still exists in the future, these updates only bring minor changes, otherwise I will have updated my guide and created a new video, so rest assured you can still follow along just fine. Anyways, once the download finishes, we're going to go back, scroll down a little bit, and we're going to download the XLD Log Checker plugin as well, more specifically the 2020 2012-30 version. This is the plugin we're going to be using to add checksums to our log files. Once this is downloaded, we can minimize and we're going to open up our downloads folder again. So in your downloads folder or wherever you save these, you should have an XLD with the version number .dmg and you should have the XLD log checker. We're going to install XLD now by double clicking the DMG file. Once this is open, we're going to drag XLD into our applications folder. Now we're going to double click XLD to open it. Depending on your privacy settings, you may get a warning that disallows you from opening it automatically because it is from a third party. So, as you can see here, it will not allow me to open it automatically. I have to choose open and agree to this. If you can't open it from this screen, you will have to go into your system preferences, into your privacy settings, and change it so that you're allowed to open third party apps. It may also just say open XLD, which is the last program you tried to open and you can agree to open it. So we're going to open XLD. And now that XLD is open, we can minimize our applications. And we now have our preferences in XLD. So instead of messing with the preferences right now, we need to add the log checker functionality. And to know it's there, we would click XLD and we would see it in this drop down menu. But since we don't see it, we need to add it. So we're going to reopen our downloads folder. We're going to right click the XLD log checker. We're going to choose copy. We're then going to right click our finder. We're going to go to folder. And the reason we're doing it this way is because where we want to go is hidden by default on some OS's. We want to go to our library slash application support. If you can't see what is on my screen for any reason, it will also be in the description below, but then we're going to hit go once we've typed that in. And then we're going to pick XLD. Then we're going to open up plugins. Then we're going to paste the log checker here. Once this has been pasted here, we can minimize that, reopen XLD, and it will still not be here because we have to restart XLD first. So we're going to quit XLD. We'll open up our applications, reopen XLD. And now, we should have the log checker plugin. All right, we're going to mess with our preferences now. This is how we actually rip the perfect copies with XLD. It's only a one time setup. You don't have to keep doing this over and over again whenever you rip a CD. So it's like a five, 10 minute thing and then never again. 
I do apologize in advance. I would zoom in on the preferences tab and make it easier to see, but unfortunately I can't do that with the VM and OBS. So hopefully you can still see the actual things that I'm setting. However, if for any reason you can't, there is a written guide in the description below. So go ahead and check that out if you need to. So to start, we're going to be in the general tab. We're going to choose our output format and we're going to pick FLAC. We're then going to click option. Here we can set specific FLAC options. One of them is to increase the compression level if we want to. High is level eight, in case you're wondering. By default, it's on five. So it's just going to be a little smaller for no loss in quality. That's why I turned it all the way up to high. We're then going to deselect allow to embed Q sheet. And if you want to have replay gain tags written to your files, you have to leave this enabled. If you don't know what replay gain is, it's basically a thing that allows you to change the volume of all your files to the same exact volume without affecting the actual files themselves. So if you want this, go ahead and leave it and click OK. The only other thing in this tab that we have to mess with is the output directory. It should be mentioned that your full path to wherever the directory is, is going to be input into your log file. So if you're planning on sharing these rips somewhere like redacted or Orpheus, and you're going to include your log file, you want to rip to somewhere that doesn't include your full name. So for me, my computer itself is called Sharky, so it doesn't matter. But if this had my full name here, I would want to specify and then set the directory to somewhere that does not contain it. Next, we're going to go to file naming. So there's a lot to do in this tab, but all of it is optional because it doesn't affect the ripping quality itself. But I think you guys all want to have your files tagged a certain way. So what we're going to do is we're going to click custom. By default, it's set so that it's the track number space artist dash title. But as you can see, when you mouse over this field, there is a legend that pops up that shows you that you can input your own values here that you prefer. I'm going to input one that creates an artist folder that has the title of the release on it with the year and the format. And then within that folder will be the FLAC files, starting with the track number and then the title. You can do this however you want, but if you want to copy mine, it will be in the description below. We're then going to click overwrite. Then we want to mess with the character replacements. Different operating systems have reserved characters that cannot be used in file names or folder names. On Windows, for example, the slash is invalid, but a hyphen is not. So we can replace the slash with a hyphen or the colon, for example, with an X, so that when we create our files, we don't accidentally write invalid characters to them. This isn't an issue on Mac, but if you plan on sharing your rips with anybody else, even if it's just a family member, if they're on Windows, you're going to need to account for this by replacing all of the invalid characters that Windows PCs can't handle. A list of these and their full width replacements will be in the description. To add a new character, just click the plus button. And then to add a replacement, just left click the replacement tab and add one. Once you're done setting replacements for invalid characters, go ahead and move on to the batch tab. In the batch tab, we're going to choose preserve directory structure, and then we're going to change the subdirectory search depth to zero. That's it. We're going to go to CDDB now. In this tab, there's not much to change. If you're savvy and you happen to have a server that bypasses a paid metadata provider like Grace Notes or something, you can enter in your server information here. However, for the rest of us, we just leave the server on FreeDB. And for the preferred service, we can set it to Music Brains. We can also choose to automatically connect to CDDB. That way, it will automatically find the metadata for our CD whenever we put one in. Then we're going to go into the Metadata tab. Here, everything is optional. You can leave it however you want. Specifically, you can embed cover art into the files. I don't want to do this at all, so I'm going to turn these two settings off. But if you wanted to do that, you could mess with these specific settings to get the cover art to your liking. And then the last two options are also optional. I'm going to turn off set the compilation flag automatically. That basically just puts a tag in your file that tells you that the release is a compilation. It really doesn't matter to me at all. And then if you wanted to have a specific value in your comment tag in your files, like this is my rip, you could write that here. I personally don't want to put any kind of advertising in my rip. That's kind of silly to me. So I'm not going to do anything there. And then we're going to move on to the most important tab, CD rip. The reason why this specific tab is important is because all these settings here are what affects the quality of your rip itself. And it's also how you get a 100% log. So in the ripper mode, we need to select XLD secure ripper. 
We're not using CD Paranoia because it's inaccurate and it doesn't properly report its errors. And we're not using burst mode because it also skips over those errors, which can cause audio imperfections. We're not using UC2 error pointers because it's faulty or incorrect on most drives. We're going to turn on set automatically if possible. We're going to turn on query accurate rip database. We're going to choose save Q sheet to always. And then we're going to turn on these two options here, verify suspicious sectors and test before copy. I do want to make it clear that these two settings will make your rip take twice as long. However, the trade-off is that by having a test copy and then a real copy, you can match these two together to see if any errors occurred between the two rips. So basically this is just verifying the accuracy of your rips and rep reporting if there's any errors. So you want to have these two things on for that purpose, but if for whatever reason you really want your rips to go much faster with no care in the world for errors, you can just turn these off. Then we're going to click on scan replay gain. Then we're going to turn on automatically open disk on insertion, and it's up to you whether or not you eject the disk or quit XLD when done. And then we're going to mess with the final setting. We're looking at our drive's offset value now. This setting is a little tricky, which is why I left it for last. I initially told you to set automatically if possible, which may have changed this zero value here to something else. If that value did change, you're lucky. You can move straight on to the ripping process. You're done with your settings. But for those of us with a zero still, we're going to click this drop down menu. And then we would select our drive from the list that appears. Now, if you select your drive and this number changes from zero to something else, great. You also can move on to the ripping process. But if you're like me and no drive pops up at all, you're going to have to find your offset manually. If you're wondering, my drive isn't showing up specifically because I'm doing this on a VM, but other reasons for this to happen are also using remote access. Or if you have a hub of some sort and you're plugging in your USB to that hub and the hub is plugged into your computer, all of those are reasons why it might not appear here. But essentially, if you can't find your drive, we're going to have to find that offset manually. And to do that, we're going to look at the drive name itself. And then we're going to check the accurate RIP database, which has a list of offsets. And we're going to see what it says for our drive specifically. To find out what our drive is called, we're going to click on the Apple logo, then about this Mac. We're then going to click system report. We're then going to click disk burning. Then at the very top, it should show us our drive name. And then once you have the drive name, as you can see here, mine is Dell. DW316, I would then look at the accurate RIP database to find my offset value. Just to note, if you have an Apple Super Drive, these drives are actually rebranded and under the hood are completely different drives. So if you're looking here and are completely dumbfounded as to why it doesn't say Apple Super Drive and it says something completely different, that's totally normal. Just find the offset value of the drive name that it shows here in the burning device. And unfortunately, if you're using an Apple SuperDrive and it specifically says Apple SuperDrive here in the burning device, you will have to do one more step on top of this to find your actual offset value. So the offset value that you have now from the Accurate Rip database should be entered into your offset value and preferences. For me, it's plus six, so I'm gonna enter plus six, but if yours was minus five for some reason, you would type that instead. Everybody but the poorer users who are on an Apple SuperDrive with the generic name can now move on to the ripping settings. However, for those of you who do have an Apple SuperDrive and you don't know your offset still, input plus 667 into the read sample offset correction value. And then what you're going to need to do is rip three unique, fairly popular CDs so that you can then reference the log output and see what other people are submitting for that drive. On screen right now, you can see a log file that shows right below the TOC or the table of contents. There's this section for a list of alternative offset correction values. This is how you find your real offset. If it says absolute six with a relative of minus 661 and the confidence number is fairly high, there's a very good chance that your real offset is plus six. If this section doesn't appear at all or the confidence value is very low, there's a good chance that your real offset is plus 667. Now that we have our offset values, we can move on to the ripping process. Now, how do you actually rip your CD? Well, every time you want to rip a CD with XLD, you're going to turn it on. You're going to put your CD into your CD drive. Then with XLD open, you're going to click File, 
open audio CD, you're going to select the CD in question, then it's going to detect your pre-gap for your CD in question. Once it's done detecting that, we're going to move on to tagging the CD itself. Then once the tags are done, we're going to click extract and it's going to finish ripping. So when XLD finishes detecting the pre-gap, it brings you to this fancy page right here. In some cases, the metadata will populate and auto-tag your CD for you, like right now for me. However, in many cases, especially with new releases or niche stuff like Dojin Music, there's just no entry in a database yet, so it can't pull any metadata from anywhere. Unfortunately, in these cases, you will have to tag the release manually, and you can do that by left-clicking on one of the tracks and then clicking Edit Metadata. You can then put out whatever information you want here or remove whatever you need to, then click Next and then fix the information on the second song, then continuously click next until you're done. If you wanna edit all the files at once, you can highlight them all, then click edit metadata and do the same thing. Do make sure you actually use the metadata lookup before you go and manually tag your release. Click CDDB, go to query items, make sure these are set to everything or whichever ones you want, then click get CD track names or click get metadata. Both of them do the same thing. If there's a result in the database, it will pull the release for you like it did for me. Otherwise, you will probably have to manually tag things. Do keep in mind that you can use get metadata from URL and paste either a Music Brains URL or a Discogs URL, and it will auto tag with those sites as well. Now, once your tags are set correctly, look at include pre-gap except for HDOA, make sure this is enabled. And then all we have to do now is click extract. So just to reiterate, every time we want to rip a CD now, because we already set up the preferences, all we have to do is put the CD into our CD drive, open XLD, open the CD with XLD, tag it how we want, and then click Extract. The extraction process is showing up here in this progress bar. Once all of these tracks are done extracting, it will finish, and a log file will pop up. Because we told it to save our log file all the time, we can just close out of this log file that pops up. But one last note, because this is a pretty common occurrence on Mac products, I want to make you all aware that if it says that your drive name is null, null, null inside of your log file instead of an actual drive name, the reason for this happening is because most Mac hubs the thing that you plug your drive into that also plugs into your computer, it usually has a problem with reading your actual CD drive name. So if you want your CD drive to appear in your log file, which if you're sharing your rips anywhere, you do want that, you're gonna have to plug your drive directly into your computer, unfortunately. Now, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them below. If you found it hard to understand in some way because maybe I, I don't articulate enough or I talk too fast, there is a written guide in the description, so go ahead and read that instead if you prefer. If for any reason you want to cancel your RIP, you can just click Cancel All Tasks, and it will stop, by the way. Thanks. Goodbye.